Hey everybody, welcome back to another video on my channel. And today we not only built our own custom fetch logic, because I know some of you requested that right in the video comments. No, we even do more. We use the very well-known repository pattern to abstract away our API and see how we do this while still keeping everything nice and not running into any issues with composables, functions, use fetch. You know the drill. Let's go. dive into the application and build it step by step yeah there were some improvements with regards to using use fetch versus dollar fetch now if you misuse use fetch like i've shown in a recent video which is linked there or down in the description there is a warning now which you can see right here and if you've seen it before you might wonder oh, okay should i change something the answer is yes you most likely should there might be some edge cases but in all scenarios you might misuse composables versus functions, and we have a look into that as well when we build our repository now right away. Very important, make sure that you understand use fetch and use async data a little bit. We will only use them at the end because we start with the very basics and then we go over how to use the things in composables. Okay, let's jump into demo application and give the whole thing a go. Our demo application is not crazy complex. As usual, we wanna keep it very simple an empty Nux config, it's fine. We have an index page and here we just call our JSON placeholder typicode API. So right now, okay, we get some data. I will show it to you in a second in the browser, but there is nothing abstracted away. It's plain in the code and that's not exactly what we want. Very important here for the whole thing with use async data, we could also just use a use fetch and provide the URL. But as we will use use async data throughout the video, I thought it's nice to start with that straight away. And then in here we have our utils file repository and we don't have much here going on because we want to build that, right? But what we have is our type defined before, so to get all the TypeScript magic. Okay, let's jump into the browser and see if things work as they should. And they do, perfect, that's great. We get all the users from the API, fine. And just to double check, no warnings, just some logs, we're good. Okay, maybe let's leave it open. Let's jump back into the code and start our implementation. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is looking into our repository pattern. So in the utils file here, the good thing is this is auto imported so we can just use that repository and we want to implement that get function over here, right? So what we wanna do is this get function should return technically a promise giving us in the end some user. And of course that won't work here straight away. We just return a string. So nah, not ideal. And what we can do is, well, why not just use dollar fetch in here, right? We could do that, it works. It's auto imported. Yeah, we need some URL that will work fine. So technically we could even say, hey, let's go to the index page, take that code from here and copy it over in here, right? And that works fine. Okay, now we could even say, hey, let's get our user repository. Our user repo is repository, call it, and in here, we don't use the dollar fetch anymore, but user repo.get. And so far, so good. The nice part is now we already have the type completions here because in our user repo get, we have the definition. We even make sure, okay, hey, we make sure this is a user because it's an external uh, API we don't really know. Maybe you should also add users here. <laughs> that would be very helpful. Um, and yeah, we're good to go in theory. But there is more behind it, of course. We This is not the whole video. Otherwise, yeah, it would be a bit pointless because there are lots of things you maybe want to do in your fetch instance. There are things you want to set like authorization things. You maybe want to change the base URL based on the runtime config and so on and so on. So there are lots of things that you can't really do in a utility part here. Okay, so how do we do this instead? Well, the easiest way is we say that repository, when it's instantiated, gets a custom fetch instance. And how do you do it? Well, we say it gets a fetch instance, which is of type $fetch, and we'll import in a second. And here, you could either use like unknown or any or whatever, or we just make it a generic, which is a bit nicer. So we say T and then nitro fetch request here. And as you see, okay, there's no auto completion for that. It's not there. We just import that. So we import type nitro fetch request and dollar fetch from uh, nitro pack. And here we go. And instead of using dollar fetch here, we just use fetch. Okay, and 
this doesn't fully work yet. There are some TypeScript errors, of course, because now we have to pass in the fetch instance. And what we can do is we can just say, hey, you know what? Let's just pass in fetch here. And let's have a look if this exact code works. So let's jump back into the browser and have a look. And well, still the same as we've seen before. That works fine. Great. But are we, are we done yet? Well, once again, we're not really done yet because now we passed in the dollar fetch instance as the general fetch instance, and we didn't do any customizations, but this is coming now. So what we're doing next is we create our own fetch instance and then use it when we initialize this repository. That means you can have different fetch instances for different repositories doing other things like oh, authentication here, maybe without authentication there, whatever you want. Let's do that, jump back in the code and see how this works. So instead of using $fetch here, we could create our own instance by saying $fetch.create. And right now in the repository, well, we have this base URL here that's not really nice, right? Ideally, we just want to call slash users and we're good. And the base URL should be set, should be set throughout our fetch instance. So let's do that here and say base URL should be set to the JSON placeholder API. And now we might wonder, okay, yeah, um, now I always have to set that when I call the repository. And that's not ideal, of course. So maybe we could somehow globally provide this instance and also make sure that we can set things through the runtime config and also just once. And here, I also recommend the blog post from Sebastian, who also outlined how to use that and make that easy. And we use a similar approach. What we want to do is we want to create a Nuxt plugin. So let's say plugins, api.ts. And in here, in this Nuxt plugin, we want to make sure that we define our custom fetch instance. We can set all the things that we want, and then we provide it globally to the Nuxt application. So we create a default Nuxt plugin where I define Nuxt plugin. This might be nothing new to you if you have used plugins before, but here's a little twist. Instead of using a function, we use the new object notation. If you don't know it, don't worry. Um, I'll cover that in the next video. But so far, think of the setup function as the same thing as you would just say, hey, okay, I'll create a function here. This works the same way. But in our case, it doesn't matter much. Just want to show you that there is this object notation. It can be very useful. As I said, in our case, no big deal, but something to think about. And now we can technically take this declaration over here, take it, move it over here. And here we could also say, okay, you know what? Uh, use runtime config dot uh, no, public um, AP base URL, something like that. We could define that and say, hey, we could use this, or if it's not there, that placeholder. Um, though it would be easier to already provide that AP base URL default in your next config, but that would work. For the sake of simplicity, let's just keep it up with the string here, but it's still fine. And from here, you can do even more. You can use interceptors. So you could, for example, say, hey, uh, on response or on request, do certain things like set authorization tokens, refresh stuff. And even though it's a bit low level, because these interceptors are they're not related to composables or anything, they're just related to fetch API. It's really useful to do that right here because this fetch instance, which we will share in a bit, that can be reused and you only have to, you only have to define your logic once. So let's say const API is dollar fetch create and so on and so on. And now we say return and we use the provide key to make sure that we provide our API here. Okay. So far, so good. We have this custom fetch instance. So somehow we have to pass our API instance that we provided in here. And because we provided for a plugin, it has a dollar prefix, but that still doesn't work. And why is that? Well, we have to get it from somewhere. So we use the use Nuxt app composable here and destructure it. And here we go. We have still the full type safety. It passed in here and it works. And here we have that repository fully set up. And if we have a look in our repository in here, we could, as I said, define the lead, post and so on, so on. We'll always use the same fetch instance. So all the logic with regards to authentication will just work out of the box. And with a few simple files, this can work nicely. I would still recommend to not use use async data inside these repository patterns because 
they should work with the most low level things we have available, which is dollar fetch more or less, the fetch API wrapper, because then you can decide, hey, do I need to send that in an event listener for a button click? Then I can just call the repository, like user repo dot post and await that. That works fine. It's basically like using dollar fetch under the hood, as for example, shown in the, you might use use fetch wrong video. And if you really need it for like, okay, I want to watch some properties, I want some reactivity, I want some stateful logic, or I want data available through server side rendering, then you just use, as we did it right here, use async data and then call it in there. The best part, type safety will work. And even if you use your own API endpoints in the server, that will also still work with exactly that setup. So you have the full end-to-end -end type safety still available. That's the best part. So all in all, a repository pattern might be a good idea. You can build it as we did here. You can use classes. That's really up to you. When you use classes, though, make sure they are not serialized. Otherwise, you get some weird errors, which I've explained in this video over here or down in the description. But all in all, it's a really useful pattern. Just make sure don't return use async data. Stay with dollar fetch and use use async data sparingly when needed. Because right now, everything in the repository pattern, the utils, it's totally separate from actual view context. We don't use any composables. We don't use any reactivity. That's what we can build on top. I would really advise not to put it all together and mix it up. Instead, have it nice, clean, and separate. And that's what we did here. Any questions? Let me know in the comments. The code is, as usual, linked below. And with this pattern, things and issues will be gone if you like to use the repository pattern. Otherwise, you always can structure it as you like. This is just an example of using a custom batch instance together with a repository pattern. But as I said, mix it up as you like. That's it for this video. See you next time when we talk about the new, more or less new, Nuxt plugin object syntax and how things can run in parallel and depend on each other it will be amazing. So stay tuned, take a look at all the other videos and happy hacking.